I'm going to review the movie named Shadow, released date 2018, many years ago Chinese kings and nobles had to face wars, internal power struggles so as the constant fear of being murdered, which puts their lives on the line all the time, they privately use substitutes known as shadows, the shadows bravely risk their lives in service to their masters and shows their loyalty by condoning death, the movie tells the story of one such shadow of long ago, the Prominent and robust commander Tsuyu of the Kingdom of Pei lost in a duel against the clearly indisruptible Kang the general of the King of Yang, because of this the Kingdom of Pei lost one of its substantial cities Jingju to the Kingdom of Yang, the movie starts up with Liu Yang the master of the Pei Kingdom, reporting to the king that Tsuyu the commander has challenged the general of the Yang Kingdom to a one-on-one -on -one fight to recover Jing city, he further indicates that Yang has accepted the challenge and hearing this, the king gets annoyed and orders the minister to bring the commander before him, in the following scene the king comes into a room where Tsuyu's wife Xiao and the king's sister Qingping are tossing dice in a Tai Chi board, Xiao Wai examine the signs that the battle will start after seven days, when the rain and water rises and they will gain victory when Zuyu appears the king instantly questions his visit to Yang, Zuyu answers that he wants one-on-one -on -one battle with Yang Kang to restore Jing city, however the king worries that the fight will generate a war and demolish the peace of Pei, when asked if he can win Zuyu replies that he's uncertain, he then says that, he's prepared for any penalty for disobeying the king, however the king claims that he won't behead Zuyu since he took care of him and his sister and protected his throne all these years, meanwhile the minister urges them to enjoy the meeting, so the king orders Zuyu and his wife Xiao to play the zither for him, surprisingly Zuyu refused to perform alleging that the kingdom is in distress and that is not in the mood, after Xiao and Su Yu left the room the king proportions his plan to minister Liu Yang, about marrying his beloved sister Qingping to Yang Kang's son Yangping, the main purpose behind the marriage is to strengthen peace between the both kingdoms and stop the war from happening, in the next scene. Shokai came into a concealed room that directs to a cave, here it's disclosed that the real commander Tsuyu Yu had sustained serious injuries in his earlier combat with Yang Kang, and is currently recovery in a hidden cave in his residence, whereas the commander who's been bargaining with everyone is a man named Jing, who's referred to as the Shadow of Tsuyu, he's been named after Jing's city for his incredible similarity to Tsuyu. Yu, Jing was abducted and discreetly taught as a shadow by Tsuyu's Yu's uncle. Twenty years ago Jing spent all these years in the cave where he was taught to be a shadow until Tsu Yu's health deteriorated a year ago, after Tsu Yu's uncle died Tsu Yu brutally trained Jing and now he needs Jing to kill Yang and take over Jing city, only Tsu Yu and his wife are conscious of this arrangement. Moreover once Jing defeats Yang and reclaims Jing city, he will be permitted to go back to his mother, in order to make everything look identical Soyu cuts deep into Jing's chest with a knife as he has a scar in same spot, after this Tsu Yu applies medical herbs to the injury in order to speed up the healing process and make it look a same like his, even though Jing is hurt he vouches to you that as a shadow he's prepared to die for him, the next day as they are getting prepared for the court. Hearing, where the king will penalize Zuyu, Xiao gives Jing some ointment to put on his wound, meanwhile Jing gets emotional and begin explaining about how hard it was for him to remain in the dark, without the presence of the society or sound, being the nice woman that she is, Xiao begin consoling him. But Jing gets over delighted and grips her firmly, this startles Xiao and she pushes him away, before leaving the place, at the court despite the disapprovals of other military officials, the king decides to penalize Zuyu without realizing that he's a shadow, the king demotes him to a commoner for disobeying his orders and for initiating a war with Yang, nonetheless before Yugu shadow leaves, the king demands on seeing the wound caused by Yang Kang's saber, so that he can attend to it by himself, upon inspecting he found that the wound is fresh, but Soyu's shadow answers that the initial wound had healed but he deliberately gave himself a new cut, to remember himself of his humiliation over the defeat of Jing city, following this he vacates proclaiming that since he's now a commoner, the king shouldn't be bothered about his combat with Yang, later on the boat Jing applies the ointment that Xiao lent him, back at the cave Xiao told Tsuyu that Jing handled the king pleasingly, however Tsuyu realizes that the king is uncertain of Jing as his shadow, in the following scene Jing is in a training session with Tsuyu, he uses an umbrella as a weapon but is of no fit against Tsuyu who mimics Yang Kang's technique, this angers Yo and he starts having distrust if Jing is ready for the fight. The next day during a feast in the hall, the minister enters and announces that Yang Ping has accepted to the truce but would only accept Qing Ping as a concubine, Ping has also sent his dagger to Qing Ping as a proposal the court condo this to be an insult, but despite Qing Ping's rejection the king accepts it, in order to put an end to the dispute because of this the general Tian openly criticizes the king's action as uncourageous and requests approval to fight Yang and his son, before retiring from his position, however Qing Ping accepts the dagger which signifies that she has accepted to be Ping's concubine, in the following scene Yang teaches his son Ping how to use a saber in battle, he tells Ping that Yangs are renowned for their four speed and death, in three rounds of their fight, the father and son then discuss about Jing who they feel is the real commander Su Yu, they discuss about his bravery and how he survived even after obtaining a crushing blow from Yang, after a while Peng mentioned that he asked Qing Ping to be his concubine, in order to hinder the Pei's from attempting 
to conquer Jing City through war, however when he found that she has accepted he is terrified despite this, Ping believes they can conquer the Pei's, because the two most powerful generals of Pei Suyu and Tian have become commoners, Ping also stated that they have the top hand as he has sent a spy to the kingdom of Pei, elsewhere after numerous failed attempts during the practice Xiaowei suggests that Jing should apply feminine techniques, and adopt the umbrella symbol of Yin in order to defeat Yang Kang, she describes the Yin and Yang's philosophy, which says Yang is correlated with light, fire, and masculinity, whereas Yin is associated with darkness, water, and femininity, Xiao illustrates the saber as Yang and the umbrella as Yin with her moves, Xiao Wei demonstrates some defensive techniques. Against Yin Kang's methods using the umbrella, this impresses Su Yu and he inquires her to train Jing, when Xiao Wei trains Yo together they are victorious in defeating Su Yu, then at Su Yu's request Jing meets Tian as Soyu and urges him to learn some winning techniques for the war, with the Yangs he also instructs Tian to lead and train the hundreds of convicts, who are living beyond the forest, after a while Jing takes Tian to see Su Yu who disclosed to him about Jing's existence, and purpose Tian learns from Su Yu that he plans to use Jing to confuse Yang Kang for three rounds, while the troops attack and regain the city, after reclaiming the city Su Yu conspire to become the king, with Tian serving as his commander, Tian being a loyal general obeys his commander, while Su Yu requests him to receive the new umbrella training from Xiao, the night before the fight Soyu Jing and Xiao drink together, after Jing and Xiao gone back to their residence Jing confesses that, he could have escaped when he had several chances but stayed there for Xiao, and would do anything for her, as they remain talking, Jing stated that he believes no one will care if he dies in the fight tomorrow, however when Xiao disclosed that she cares and that, his life matters to her he gets startled, with this he thanks her and went to sleep, after a while Xiao follows him to his bed and pass the night with him, while Su Yu watches them through a covert peephole, the following day Jing travels by water on a floating platform, to Jing city for the fight since Yang Kang is not aware about Jing being a shadow, and considers him as Yu he feels positive that Su Yu will fight one on one as promised however, Tian and the armed dwellers are down below the platform, surprisingly Qing Ping is also among the prisoners to take revenge on Ping for disgracing her, Tian attempt to stop her but she refuses, following this Tian, Qing and the prisoners secretly swim under the storm gates, and pass into the city while Yang Kang and other officials, are preoccupied with the fight Yang Kang is defeated in the first round, of the Three round fight by Jing, but he wins the other two rounds impressed by Jing's determination, Yang proposes to call it a draw but Jing refuses and asks to keep fighting, meanwhile Yang Ping and his soldiers are pushed back by Tian and the prisoners using the metal umbrella weapons, although both sides suffer significant casualties guarding the banner, Yang Ping get in combat with Qing Ping brutally injuring her, Yang Ping asks her why a lady would fight and when he moves in to hear her, she stabs him to death with the same dagger, he had sent her, with this the Yang banner is conquered by Tian, when Yang Kang discovers this he becomes violent and begin beating Jing severely, nevertheless Jing counters the circumstance and kills Yang, with a shattered piece of an umbrella blade, back at Pei. Xiaoyi visits you inside the cave Tsuyu you wonders if it was perfect, to send the shadow to the battle and Xiao replies that, there's no right or wrong whatever has to be done is done, then on their proposal the husband and wife play Xirath together, elsewhere, after killing Yang Jing went to his real home, where he sees that his mother has been stabbed to death, in short time he's attacked by a number of assassins who entrap him inside his home, fortunately he's rescued when an envoy declaring to be the king's representatives, following this the envoy stated that the king has asked for Jing in the palace, this surprised Jing as he marvels of how the king knew of his existence, however he leaves for pay, meanwhile some assassins arrive at Suyu cave to murder him, though he's sick and weak Suyu, puts all his energy and fights back, at the victory, celebration feasts of Pei Jing approaches and the king orders everyone to leave the feasts except Jing, Xiao and the minister Lu Yang, here the king discovers that it was Lu Yang who was the mole working for the Yangs, as a conclusion he finishes him off. Happy with Jing's achievement, the king wants to reward Jing by inaugurating a genuine relationship between him and Xiao, as husband and wife, according to the king he needs only one loyal Suyu so Jing don't have to play the role of the shadow any further, meanwhile a masked assassin comes into the room carrying a box which is believed to contain Suyu's head, however when the king uncovers it he finds it empty just then the assassin stabs the king from back and he falls to the ground, the Assassin then removes his mask showing himself to be Suyu injured and raged, Zuyu orders Jing to kill the king declaring that he was the one who authorized the execution of Jing's mother, furthermore he pleads Jing to take Zhao far away with him, as Jing stretches for the king's sword Suyu tries to stab him. From back but Jing prevails in fatally injuring Suyu he then puts the assassin's mask back on Suyu's face while he lay there helplessly, after this he finally kills the king with Suyu's sword and places it on Suyu's hand charging him at the murder, in the next scene Jing leaves the hall and told the authorities assembling outside that the king has been murdered by an assassin and that he killed the latter, Tian seems uncertain of the story however he does not dispute, the movie ends as Xiao runs to the hallway entrance in surprise and peeps through an opening. 
That brings us to the end of the movie, I hope you like it and please do, subscribe to this channel for more videos like this, as we bring you more of your favorite movies, thanks for watching, and see you soon.